By deciding to deploy tanks to Ukraine and significantly increasing artillery production, the United States and its allies are actively preparing for a war against Russia. Similar to the prolonged response to Joseph Stalin's annexation of Eastern Europe, the determination of the West to resist Vladimir Putin's attempts to subjugate Ukraine has been a lengthy process. However, a decisive moment has now arrived. Putin was under the impression that he could outlast the Western alliance, but the alliance is resolute in outlasting him. Any reluctance to confront Moscow for its destructive actions in Ukraine has been completely discarded. President Joe Biden is firmly committed to definitively thwarting Russia's aspirations for dominance in Europe. Despite initial hesitations, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz has agreed to send Leopard two tanks to Ukraine. His decision has both symbolic and practical importance. Symbolically, it frees Germany from the strictures that it operated under after World War II. Practically, it liberates countries such as Poland and Finland to transfer German-made tanks as soon as possible to aid a forthcoming Ukrainian offensive this spring. The United Kingdom has already promised to supply 14 Challenger II tanks to Kiev. Poland and the Baltic states have been publicly pushing for Germany to abandon its ostrich-like position against aiding Ukraine with tanks. The Leopard is free, declared Bundestag Vice President Katrin Goring Eckert on Twitter. She added, now he can hopefully help Ukraine quickly in its struggle against the Russian invasion. In all, Ukraine expects to receive 100 Leopard 2 tanks from 12 countries. The driving force in altering Germany's adamantine stance against dispatching tanks was its new defense minister, Boris Pistorius, who has made no secret of his support for Ukraine's struggle against Russian aggression, and who demanded that the Bundeswehr, as an initial step, examine its inventory of tanks. While some in the Social Democratic Party have clung to obsolete notions of reaching some kind of accommodation with Putin and his Camarilla, Schultz's coalition partners, the Free Democrats and the Greens, have been stalwart in pushing for a more hardline stance. So has the Christian Democratic Union, whose leader Friedrich Mertz declared, it's the right decision. In essence, Schultz was bowing to the inevitable. But it apparently took Biden to sweeten the pot before he would. Biden has apparently pledged to send 30 M1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine, a move that Schultz had demanded in return for altering his previous opposition to supplying tanks to Ukraine. It's the decision to ramp up military production of artillery that should also worry the Kremlin. Russia's stocks are running low. America has the capability to ramp up production rapidly. Biden is signaling that America is in the fight for the long haul. Rep. Rob Whitman is calling it a Sputnik moment. Neither Republicans nor Democrats are unaware that expanding military outlays amounts to a jobs program for Americans. At the blunt fact is that Biden is becoming a war president. Putin reckoned he could roll over Biden. He miscalculated. He thought he could sweep over Ukraine in a week. He was wrong. He thought the Western alliance would crack up. Wrong again. No one has done more to revivify the Western alliance than Putin. As the West ramps up military production, he is mired in a conflict that threatens the continuation of his tyrannical rule over Russia. Now that he has inadvertently aroused America from its post-Cold War torpor and unified Ukrainians in their resolve to oppose him, Putin faces a fight to the finish, one that he cannot win. It is now clear that when Putin invaded Ukraine, he signed his death warrant.